We'll get started this morning. It's good to see you here at church. Appreciate you coming and being a part, uh, each and every one of you. Just appreciate the Lord and his goodness and kindness to us. But we'll, we'll just start the service with prayer this morning. Everybody that will, I know there's a lot of needs. Uh, I know a lot of people have got uh, uh, kin folks and different things that are sick and family. And so we'll pray for those, and let's pray for those that are lost and undone, and just for our governments and uh, all things in general. God knows this morning. So if everybody that will, let's bow your heads and go to prayer. Great God in heaven. We just love you, honor, and glorify you. We thank you for your mercies, for your blessings. God, we just give you honor and glory this morning that we're able to come to this place and we're able to worship you and recognize you as our King and as our Savior. We know that you know all things and that we stand in need of this morning. So we just lift you up and magnify you. God, you see the needs of this nation and each and every individual that's there. God, you know every heart that's hurting this morning. You know every soul that stands in need of salvation. You see everybody that, uh, in the body that needs a healing Christ. And we know you're able to do all these things. We just you would lift up and encourage and strengthen the churches, God, and lift up those that are down and out. In Christ, we know that at this time of uh, heartache and this time of trials that we go through, that uh, people would see a need for a Christ, a need for a Savior, that those that are lost and undone will be drawn unto you. We give you all the honor and all the glory. It's in your holy name we pray this morning. Amen. Amen. Uh, once again, we do appreciate you for coming and being a part of uh, we have a couple of songs again this morning, uh, and uh, as always, I want to thank uh, all everybody that helped set up and uh, all the effort that goes into getting things ready here uh, so we can do these services the way we've been doing them, and uh, I just appreciate all the help of, uh, uh, of each and every one that's helping and all the things that's going forward. I would like to encourage us, we're still having our clothing and food banks on our third Saturday. Those are still going on, so I do encourage uh, you that if uh, those uh, if you want to help in any kind of way and I, and I know we are still trying to uh, do our social distancing and we're doing all of that uh, with that going on but I encourage you if you can uh, to help with that uh, your contact information will be uh, just with Denise Bowen to get a hold of her and she lets you know what we stand in need of and the things that are going on uh, the clothing and food bank has still been very popular in this time of need, I guess, maybe more so uh, the, the food, but uh, I do appreciate all the efforts that went forth in that, and we just appreciate uh, everybody for helping us with that. Also, uh, real quick with an update, uh, basically our sanctuary is almost finished uh, here uh, in the church. Uh, the remodeling is almost completely done, with the exception of getting our pews and our chairs in. They have not been yet. Mistaken because of some shutdowns and different things that have taken place, and so uh, we're not sure when those will come in. But if I'm not mistaken, we have all our old pews uh, have been uh, uh, sold, and so that's been taken care of, and those have been uh, uh, got rid of now. And I just appreciate all the help and all of that, and uh, uh, it's been going on, and all the ones behind the scenes has been working. Uh, for our church uh, to get it ready and uh, like I said uh, that is ready and uh, we'll be letting you know this coming week uh, how next Sunday service will proceed uh, as far as that goes but uh, once again we just appreciate you being here today and uh, we encourage you uh, I, I know we're isolated a little bit as far as in our cars we're isolated as far as uh, 
from one another, but there's still an opportunity for you to worship the Lord. Uh, if the only place that you worship God at, or the only place that you uh, uh, lift Him up and give Him honor is, is uh, at church, uh, we're failing Him in that account. Uh, uh, it doesn't have to be in a group, or it doesn't have to be uh, uh, necessarily in a church house, but it can be uh, in a churchyard in our cars this morning. Uh, I just encourage you to worship the Lord uh, uh, today and uh, recognize Him for our King and as our Savior. Uh, at this time, we'll go ahead and start with our singing.
We do appreciate you once again for being here this morning. I just appreciate the Lord, uh, his goodness and kindness to all of us. Uh, we serve a wonderful God and a wonderful Savior. Times may change, things may change, uh, situations in life will change as life goes on. Uh, things will come and things will go, but God will always be the same. He never changes. Uh, same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Uh, there'll be no, uh, he's always the same, and I just appreciate the Lord this morning. I uh, appreciate his goodness and kindness to us. Uh, if you have your Bibles this morning, you'd like to read with us. I'm going to uh, read a few verses to us and try to preach to us something that I felt uh, the Lord laid upon our hearts, maybe, uh, 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 well, I, 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 well, I hesitate, but the truth is I was in the shower, uh, and I was praying uh, uh, as I was in the shower. Uh, you may think that odd, but I don't, but uh, I was in the shower, and I was praying, and uh I felt the Lord move upon us to uh, maybe uh, preach from these scriptures this morning. In the book of Mark's writing, in the book of Mark's writing, in chapter number 4, I'd like for you to go to the end of the chapter there, in verse number 35, uh, in the book of Mark's writing, chapter number 4 this morning, and uh, I'll read to us maybe just a little bit, uh, and then read us some more scriptures that I felt the Lord laid upon the heart, and then try to preach from uh, the story here uh, where Christ would reach the end. But in chapter number 4 of the book of Mark's writing, uh, verse number 35, the scripture says, And the same day, when the evening was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And I'd like to preach to us this morning upon that thought of uh, passing over into the other side. If you will, uh, bow your heads uh, and reach your hands this way if you're able this morning. And let's ask God to reach down and touch his word and uh, encourage and strengthen. Great God in heaven, as we come to you this time, I know, God, you know each and every heart that's here and that the one that hears this morning, that that they stand in need of, and I know we're able to help them, to encourage them, to strengthen them. So, Christ, we ask that you would take this word and let it go into the airways, God, let it go into the cars, let it go into the individuals that are here this morning, Christ, that they will be encouraged and strengthened. You know their needs where I do not, and I know that you're able to touch each and every one, God. Your word will not come back void when we send it out. And we give you all the honor and all the honor and glory. It's in your holy name that we pray this morning. Amen and amen. They said we need to grab one of these mics. Maybe try to hear just a little bit better. Is that okay? All right. They said they'll try to adjust it as we go on here. But uh, I'd like to maybe read to us just a few moments, uh, uh, just a little more scripture, really, then I'll try to uh, talk to us just a little bit uh, this morning. Uh, uh, I feel like uh, we're living in a time, I heard from several uh, of our pastor brethren this past week, uh, whether it was by text or by phone calls, uh, I heard from several of them, uh, uh, we were talking, or they were asking about uh, church and the things going on and the things that they were facing, and uh uh, the things that are taking place, and I'll say to you this morning, whether you're a, a, a lay member, whether you're a musician, or whether you're a deacon, uh, uh, if you're a child of God this morning, uh, uh, and really even if you're not, but for those that are children of God this morning, our pastors, our preachers, uh, uh, we're facing things and we're doing things differently than we ever have, the things that have gone on and the things that are taking place. Uh, but I'd like to maybe kind of encourage us this morning just to always keep in mind, uh, no matter what the trial may be and no matter what we may be facing and what we're going through, uh, that Jesus Christ still sits upon the throne today, that our God and our Savior uh, understands what it is that we face and the things that we're going through uh, he has seen all things and knows all things. He understands where we're at. He understands our uh, needs this morning, the things that we face. And uh, our Christ is well and able to encourage us and to strengthen us this morning with that that we face in this life and that that we're going through and that that's taking place. Um, I know a lot of people may not be seeing your loved ones. Maybe you're not seeing your children or grandchildren. Uh, maybe those things are happening. Maybe uh, friends and neighbors, those things go on. Uh, uh, I personally, where I live at, uh, we're in a very uh, tight little community that's there. Our, our houses are all gathered together, so we all been, uh, as one family, we've been able to still see and uh, talk and get together and, and uh, uh, carry on. But I do know that there's people that's isolated. There's people uh, that's in trouble this morning. There's those that are in the nursing homes. There's those that are in hospitals. Uh, they're facing troubled times and troubles in their lives. 
But I want us to uh, encourage us this morning to let us know that Jesus Christ, our God and our Savior, uh, he knows that me and you stand in need of him. He's able to help us this morning. He's able to strengthen us with that that we face and the things that are in our life and the things that goes on uh, and that will take place. In the book of Hebrews writing in the 13th chapter, verse number 5, the scripture lets us know that Christ here, uh, the words have been left to us. He says, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee, y'all. Uh, and then you go to Matthew chapter number 28 uh, when Christ ascends back to heaven and uh, he gives the great commission. But a word that he says there, he says, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Uh, and then in the book of Matthew in the 11th chapter, uh, I'd like to read to us maybe uh, uh, some scriptures that I had a brethren friend send to me uh, this week. Uh, uh, in chapter number 11 in the book of Matthew's writing real quick, uh, here uh, toward the end of that chapter, uh, uh, if the Lord would help us, uh, Matthew 11, verse number 28, it says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest in your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. And we know that those scriptures there, he's truthfully he's dealing with salvation. He's telling us that we can be saved. And once we're saved, uh, we can begin to follow after Christ. We can begin to uh, uh, live that life for him and uh, exist for him and do the things that he would have us to do in our lives. Uh, uh, you know, uh, I'm busy with my farming. I'm busy with my church things. I'm busy uh, on phones and uh, just work in general, all the things that are going on. Uh, uh, I'm as busy today as I've ever been. The things that's taking place uh, with family, my grandkids, uh, my uh, sons and daughter-in-laws and the things that are going on in our lives. Uh, uh, we're still doing all those things that go on and life continues. But one thing we must remember, uh, the very center of our universe, the very center of our lives is Jesus Christ. And he encourages and strengthens us. Uh, when the day has come, I always give him thanks for all things that I've uh, I've been through in all things in our lives, the things that he has done for us. Uh, he's encouraged us. He's strengthened us. Uh, he gives us uh, the ability to get up and to breathe. Uh, I heard, uh, and I know this is uh, live on Facebook. I know it's live uh, uh, across the airways, but I heard those in the news media. I've heard those uh, that said uh, the numbers of uh, the COVID has come down in some places and uh, those things have uh, leveled off and those things and this and that. And uh, I heard one a uh, man make a statement up in New York. Uh, uh, he basically said it was not because of God. It was not because of uh, uh, faith or those type things, but it was because of what we did and the things that we've done in our lives. But uh, I'd like to say to you this morning, uh, Jesus Christ, if God Almighty uh, didn't give you your very next breath, you would not be able to take it. Uh, uh, if he withdrew his hand from us this morning, uh, we would not be able to rise out of the bed. We would not be able to uh, uh, go to work. We will not be able to do the things that we do, but because of God's great love to us, because of God's great mercy, uh, because of the grace of God that he sheds in our lives, uh, he's merciful unto us and he's gracious unto us. And so he uh, has gave us the ability uh, to do things. He's gave us the ability we can get up and we can go about or we can have families, we can do those things, but never forget that it is all because of Christ, it is all because of God that we're able to do those things in our lives. Uh, whatever you have this morning, uh, that's all right, Brother Joe, I appreciate that. Stick your hand out the window once in a while. It's because of God, though, that you're here this morning. He gave you the vehicle that you have. Uh, he gave you the gas that you put in it, uh, the oil that was there in You say, no, Brother Rob, uh, uh, they done that at the gas station. They done that at the dealership. All things are because of Christ this morning. All things are because of God. Without him, we would not be able this morning. Uh, we would not could do anything. We would simply return to the dust of this earth. But because of Christ and because of his mercies and love toward us, he's encouraged us, he's helped us. Uh, he lets us know that he would not burden us down with more than we could bear, that he would not do unto us things that we were not able to overcome. Uh, we are made overcomers this morning through Jesus Christ. Uh, we're able to overcome because 
of my Lord, our King and our Savior. I am what I am this morning because of my resurrected Savior, my Redeemer, which is Christ, the mighty God of heaven who sits on the right hand of the Father. He's there this morning to intercede for me for the needs that are in my life. He will call out to my Father above. He will reconcile unto me, me unto Him. And because of that, I am encouraged this morning. I'm not telling you I believe that the COVID-19 is real. I've seen the effect of that. But my God is greater than the COVID-19. He is greater than the trial that is in your life. The battle that you're in this morning. I want you to know uh, Jesus has not forsaken you. Uh, He will be with you to the very end. He'll be there to encourage and to lift you up this morning. We serve a risen Savior. Our God is not dead. We as a church are not act like He's dead. Come on. We will not act like he's dead. We're not careful. We don't, we don't see a risen Savior, a risen God. We see times and troubles that have entered our lives. But let me tell you, a blessing that may come out of this. Maybe there will be a lost man somewhere because of the things that are taking place. Maybe there will be one that is lost and undone this morning. And because of what you're suffering and what you're going through, Maybe they'll see a need in their lives for a Redeemer. Maybe they'll see a need for a Christ. Maybe they'll see a need for some hope in their life. See, all things always come back to Jesus for me. All things always come back to Him. When I'm thankful for my grandkids. But you know what? It always goes back to Jesus Christ because He gave them unto me. I'm thankful for my home, for my wife, for all those things. Uh, This God in heaven, this Christ this morning, that we cannot lay a physical hand on. We cannot physically walk up and shake hands with Him. But we can feel Him in spirit this morning. We can feel Him in the presence of His holiness. Just because we had not had church over the past month like we did before, doesn't mean I had not felt God. Doesn't mean I had not felt Christ. You can feel him as you're going down the road. You can feel him in Walmart. Or you can feel him at your workplace. This is a Redeemer. This is a Savior this morning. He knows the need that you have. He sees where you're at. What about now? Thank you, brother. We serve this wonderful God, this wonderful Savior. Back in the book of Mark's writing. In chapter number four, I read to us the scripture here where he says, And when the same day, when evening was come, he said unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. When they had sent away the multitude, they took him, even as he was in the ship. And there also was with him other little ships. There arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat unto the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. They awake him and said unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? He arose, he rebuked the wind, said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. He said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? They feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and sea obey him? And then the scripture says, And they came over unto the other side of the sea, unto the country of the Gadareans. The scripture that I read to us to start the service this morning, or the preaching part of it. Scripture says, verse number 35, that the evening was come. Jesus Christ had just got through ministering to a great multitude. There was those in the beginning of chapter number four, if you'll go and read that at the beginning of it, he says that there was a great multitude that had gathered with him by the sea. And that he had sat there with them, he ministered unto them, he taught several parables there, the sores there of, of the word of God, how it affects us and what it does in our lives. Uh, uh, he talks about how that we should be a candle uh, light, as a candlestick. Uh, it should not be hid this morning. Uh, we as Christians should not let our candle light be snuffed out. It should not be put out by the things that are taking place in the circumstances of life, the things that are going on around us. But we should uh, uh, light that candle. And he 
it should be held up for everybody to see uh, and the things that are going on. He talks about uh, uh, the growing seed and he talks about the grain of mustard seed here uh, as the church and referring unto it and how all the uh, different factions of the church come in. But then he tells his disciples, he says to them, uh, uh, get into a ship here, let us pass over uh, to the other side. In other words, he says we're going to the other side. Uh, he knew that there was a great uh, wind. He knew that there was a great storm that they were going to face. He understood that. Uh, he knew that things that would be taking place. But here he is in the midst of this great storm, in the midst of the uh, waves of uh, uh, rage and the things that are going on. We find Jesus Christ in the hinder part of the ship uh, and he's asleep on a pillow. But I'd like for you to notice verse number 35 what he says unto them, let us pass over until the other side. Uh, in other words, he didn't say uh, we may go, we can go, or whatever. But he said, well, let us pass over or that uh, unto the other side. And then you'll find in the beginning of chapter number 5, verse number 1, if you don't read on past 4, you'll miss the end of that story where it says, and they came over unto the other side. I'd like to tell you this morning, no matter your heartache, no matter your troubles, I'd like to say to you this morning, no matter what you're going through, no matter how boisterous the winds may get, no matter how high the waves may roll, uh, uh, that if you're born again this morning, that if uh, you're saved by the grace of God Almighty, that if you're on your way to heaven, that we're going to the other side, uh, that he's going to be there for us. Uh, whatever we face, whatever we go through, uh, I already read to us in Scripture where Christ gives us a promise. He lets us know that he will be there with us even to the very end of the world. In other words, he'll be there for our needs, the troubles that we have, the things that we face this morning. And he says unto them, uh, why has your faith failed you in my words? Uh, in other words, we should this morning look to our Christ and look to our God, uh, our faith in him this morning, because he knows all things and does all things for us. Uh, he is there for us in the darkest hour, no matter your trouble this morning. Uh, he understands where you're at. He knows the trials in your life. Uh, he understands your children this morning, the things that they face. Uh, those that are on drugs, those that are on alcohol this morning. Uh, I want you to be encouraged to know that God Almighty can take them to the other side, that he's there to be with them. Uh, I'm not just referring to going to heaven this morning, but I'm talking about this life. Uh, while we're here, the journey that we're on this morning, uh, a man gets saved, and after he gets saved, he lives a life for God Almighty. And the end of that life, uh, as we know it, comes to an end upon death, upon this earth, and after that, the resurrection, and then heaven will be our homes. But I want you to know this morning, there's a place and there's a journey that we're in. There's a lifespan that we live here, and we can live that life for our God and for our Savior this morning. Uh, we can be encouraged with the troubles and the things that are going on and say that my God is greater that lives in me than the troubles of my life, the things that we face, the heartaches of life that are in your life this morning. I want you to know that God loves you this morning, that God cares about you, that he sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, that he died on a cross so that you might have life and have it eternal this morning. Uh, he came for us that we could have life and not only have life in the book of John, but have it more abundantly this morning. There's an abundant life and an almighty God today. There's a Christ that we can lift our hands up and worship him and glorify him this morning. He is our God. He is my redeemer. He is my hope this morning. The winds may blow and the waves may be high, but I want you to know that Jesus Christ is still my God and he's still my savior. He can help us this morning in the battle that you're in. Don't look at the winds around you. Don't look at the waves as they rise and up. But look up unto our God and to our Savior and know that He's there for you in the midst of the battle, in the midst of the troubles. And He'll help you and encourage you today. Whatever it is you might be facing. Whatever it is that may be going on. God Almighty is still on the throne. He's there for us today. All we have to do is call out unto Him. All we have to do is look unto Him those disciples in that ship, the winds came upon them. The seas began to roll. 
the water came in their boat. They begin to sink maybe and they begin to go down. And Jesus Christ is there in the hinder part of that ship. So many times we just leave him in the back of the ship. So many times I'm scared that in America today, I'm scared in the society that we live in. I'm scared in the things that are going on in New York and all those places. Uh, you can hear it in their speeches. You can hear it in the things that they say. Uh, they are uh, taking care of their own problems. They're trying to do their own things. Well, glory to God. I want to arise and wake the master that's in the hinder part of the ship. I want him to be the captain of this ship and lead me and guide me and the waves are may be around me. The winds might be blowing this morning. I'm telling you these uh, uh, winds they blow. Uh, uh, scriptures I can't keep up with them. Pages I can't keep up with them. But you know what? God is still God this morning. I'm encouraged in my Jesus and my Savior. Uh, I'm encouraged in the things that are taking place around us. Uh, let me, let me say it real quick. Uh, somebody wanted uh, a church. It asked me uh, yesterday or the day before. Uh, we got a, a gooseneck trailer, a uh, 24 foot one, and they wanted to borrow it so they could have church upon it. And I said, sure. Uh, that's no problem. I'll uh, get it. Uh, well, I came by this happening. It's on the way to where I go to work sometimes. And I seen the trailer there and I seen them. Well, really, it's a, a, it's a cow trough. About five foot long, about three foot wide up on that trailer. Well, it got my mind to wonder what was going on with that cow truck. I thought to myself, I said, I wonder what they're going to do with that. I said, they might be going to baptize somebody. Who knows? So I just picked my phone up and I called the man. I said, hey, I came by and I seen that cow truck. He got my curiosity up. I don't know what's taking place. He said, well, we're going to baptize a man. I said, praise God. You know what? COVID-19 don't stop a man from getting saved. It can't stop him from being baptized. It can't stop him from making his home in heaven when this life is over. I'm here to tell you this morning. I've seen people put forth efforts to worship God. They put forth efforts to serve a Savior. They put forth efforts to have church on the outside. They put forth efforts to have a baptizing on the back of a trailer in a cow trough. Glory to God. What a testimony that a man could say that I so desire to be baptized in almighty God that I was willing to be dipped in a cow trough. I'm telling you this morning, church, uh, uh, the hell cannot prevail against the gates of heaven when this life is over. It does not matter. Our God and our Savior is in control this morning. Uh, he's able to speak to the winds and calm them and they'll have to lay down and the waves cannot roar anymore. Put your hope in him this morning, church. Put your hope in a Savior, in a God. Look up to Him. Let your faith grow stronger in times of troubles and times of trial. And say that I know that my Redeemer is Jesus Christ. And He's able to help me and encourage me and strengthen me. Whatever your trial is today. Whatever it is you face. I felt God deal with my heart to tell you to be encouraged in Him. Don't let your light go out. But let it ever more shine. The darker the world grows around us, the darker things become, the greater the light of a Christian should shine in the times that we live in. There should be a faith. There should be something in us that is stirred beyond men, beyond the world around us, the things that they cannot see. That one man claims in New York that it was done by him. I say that it's all done by God this morning. That one man may claim somewhere else that I built this or I done that. I say God built it. God done that. He took us as individuals. Yes, he uses us in places. But never forget who our Redeemer and who our God is. Never forget that our Savior is Christ. I encourage you as you go about this next week, you look at the things around you and you begin to see God. I used to hear a lady on the radio and I know a lot of you probably heard her also. She was a wife of a preacher, and, and he would preach, but she would testify at times. She'd get to thanking the Lord for all that God had done for her. And I mean, she'd get to thanking him for the cupboard she had in her house, for the plates that she was putting in them, for the dish rag that she was washing her dishes with. If this world, and we know it, would come back to our Christ and our God, we would humble ourselves down, confess our sins, you know that scripture. And we begin to lift up our God and to magnify Him and to glorify Him.
glorify him. He could do things in our families, in our children, in our neighbors like we've never seen before. We see COVID-19 as a disaster. We see it as uh, things that is coming. But I'm telling you, God's able to take the bad things in life. He's able to take the harmful things. He's able to take the disasters. And he's able to turn them in that that he so well pleases. I encourage you this week. Look unto God. Look unto a Christ. And look unto a Savior. He's a wonderful God and a wonderful Savior. If we'll bow our heads. Great God, we just glorify you once again. Jesus, I thank you for each and every one that's turned aside to come this way today. God, I know you see every heart that is here and everyone that's heard this word. Christ, I know that I might be a poor example of a preacher. But I know that you can take a word from heaven and you can take a word that God has gave a man. And you can lift up a heart that is down and out and you can encourage a soul that's in trouble today. Jesus, I know that you do all things and we put all our trust and faith in you. I ask you to go with these people, God, to encourage them, to strengthen them. Those in this land, Jesus, that does not know you and have not seen you and do not believe that you are Christ and you are the God of heaven. I ask that you would deal with their hearts in these weeks ahead. That if it would take this that's going on for them to see you, praise God. That you would just get a hold of those that are undone and lost this morning. Those that are down and out, that you would lift them up. Jesus, I know all things are due unto you, and you are our Christ, and you are our Savior. Once again, we do appreciate you for coming this morning. Appreciate you for being a part of our service. I encourage you to put God in your life this week, to lift him up, and to magnify him. As far as the church goes, we'll be letting you know later on this week how we're going to conduct services next Sunday uh, as it'll be coming about. But we do appreciate you for being here this morning. Appreciate all the smiling faces. Uh, appreciate all the prayers from everybody. We've been praying for each and every one. The church lifting each other up. We had a prayer list at this church uh, that we take home with us uh, with names on the people that's been hurting and troubles in their lives. Uh, that's probably not being published as much right now, but you know, just because we don't do those things doesn't mean they ain't still trouble. So church, lift up one another. Pray for the needs of our brethren and of our sister. And, encourage them. I appreciate you this morning for being here. Thank you very much.